Hey everyone, welcome to today's geography stream. Today we're going to be learning about hot deserts. There are two aims for the lesson. One, to give the definition of a hot desert and two, to be able to describe the characteristics of hot deserts, including what the climate's like and what the soils are like. Let's start with the definition. A desert is an area that receives less than 250 millimetres of precipitation per year. Day to night temperatures can range dramatically from 50 degrees in the daytime to below zero degrees at night. To put this into perspective, let's make a comparison to the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, at the height of summer, the temperature might reach about 34 degrees. That's when we can go outside in our gardens, we can wear our shorts and t-shirts, and the weather is really hot. Now think about how hot it is at the de in the desert at 50 degrees. If we then compare the nighttime temperatures, in the United Kingdom, in winter, think of those really cold, icy, frosty mornings. That's the temperature that the desert is at night time. And the reason for this is because there's a lack of cloud cover, because there's a high pressure weather system. Desert are dry and arid, and this means the area lacks rainfall, so little vegetation grows. So in other words, that's why we don't really get many plants growing in the desert. So what is the distribution of hot deserts? The word distribution means how spread out something is. So this question is asking us how spread out are the deserts? Where can the deserts be found? Hot deserts are distributed around the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Deserts are usually found at mid latitudes between 30 to 50 degrees north and south of the equator. The world's largest desert is the Sahara Desert located in Africa. Other major deserts include the Arabian Desert, Kalahari Desert and the Syrian Desert. Why are deserts located in mid latitudes? Global atmospheric circulation is the reason we get different climates all over the world. The reason deserts form between 30 to 50 degrees is because of the movement of air in the Hadley and Ferrell cell. If you look at the diagram in the top left corner of the screen, you can see the cells clearly named. What's happening in the Hadley cell is the sun is shining on the cell, causing the warm air to rise. It then cools and condenses, and this causes a low amount of rainfall in the desert. As the air sinks, it creates high pressure, which means that there's hot and dry conditions. In the ferrule cell, the same process is happening. When there is a high pressure, there is no rain, meaning the desert is hot and dry. So what is the climate like in hot deserts? This is an example of a climate graph for the tar desert. And it's really important that we are able to understand what the graph is showing. So along the bottom axis, we can see the months, January, February, March, April, etc. On the left hand side, we can see the temperature, on the right-hand side, we can see the precipitation. So the precipitation is shown on the graph as the blue bars. Precipitation means the amount of rainfall. We need to be really careful when we're reading climate graphs that we look at the correct axis. So if I wanted to give the amount of rainfall for August, I would need to look at the blue bar for August, look at the right-hand axis where it says precipitation, and I can see that in, in August, the rainfall is 50 millimetres. To give you another example, if we look at January, look right across at the right hand side axis, we can see that the precipitation in January is much lower, it's eight millimetres. The orange line shows temperature. And this graph is really easy because it tells us the temperature above the line. So I can see in May and June, the temperature is 34 degrees. In October, the temperature is 28 degrees. In an exam, those numbers might not be shown on the line. So what you would need to do is look at the orange line, look at the left hand axis where it says temperature, and you will be able to read how hot it is in the desert. Here are some useful calculations that you can use when reading a climate graph. 
first of all, you could work out the temperature range. This is where we work out the highest temperature, take away the lowest temperature, and that will give us the range. If we look on the graph, the highest temperature is 34, the lowest temperature is 16, so 34 take away 16 is 18 degrees, that's our temperature range. If we wanted to work out the annual rainfall, we need to add each month of rainfall together. So this time I need to look at the blue bars, I need to make sure I look at the right hand axis where it says precipitation, I need to add up each month of rainfall. So in January it's 8, plus February it's 5, plus March it's 3, plus 4, plus 15, plus 23, plus 59, plus 53, plus 49, plus 12, plus 1, plus 3. Our annual rainfall is 352 millimetres. Then I can work out the average monthly rainfall. To do this, we look at the annual rainfall, we divide it by 12 because there's 12 months. So our annual rainfall was 352, divide it by 12, that means our average monthly rainfall is 29.3 to one decimal place. Our second aim of this lesson was to be able to describe the characteristics of the soils in the desert. The soil is dry because it's so hot, obviously. Most soil in the desert isn't very fertile, hence why there's very few plants. There is little decomposition because plants don't tend to lose their leaves. The nutrients in the soil decay rapidly because it's so hot. Only certain species of plants can survive in the desert and an example would be a cactus. So here's five quick facts to take away with you. Deserts receive less than 250 millimetres of rainfall per year. The highest temperature in the Tar Desert is 34 degrees. The annual rainfall in the Tar Desert is 352 millimetres. The soil isn't very fertile and nutrients decay rapidly in the soil because the temperature is so hot. I really hope you've enjoyed today's geography stream. See you again next time for more.